I pledge to work on a bipartisan basis to drive results and get things done. We My pledge to the governor is to work professionally and cooperatively with Mr. Rauner. Governor, you face tough challenges. I want you to know that I look forward to working with you. Hi, I'm Matt Dietrich from Reboot Illinois. Welcome to another edition of Only in Illinois, your video recap of all the political happenings in Illinois. I'm here today in the Illinois State House Chambers and I'm joined by Kerry Lester, the State House Bureau Chief for the Associated Press here in Springfield. We've just come off a really big week. We had a brand new governor sworn in. We had the 99th General Assembly sworn in. We've got a whole new dynamic and uh, we've actually got the center of state politics sort of shifting back to Springfield. So, Kerry, I'm curious from your perspective, What's your general reaction of the, what was the, the tone like this week? Uh, what's, what's, what's it like down here? Well, Matt, I think there's two things that are going on. I think that there, there are these overtures to bipartisanship. You heard that in, in new Governor Bruce Rauner's uh, inaugural address on Monday. You heard that in the speeches by, by the leaders of, of the Democratic House and in, in, in Democratic run House and Senate chambers. But at the same time, um, these leaders in, in Illinois' divided government for the first time in more than a decade are also setting out clear agenda items. So I think while they're saying they're going to work together, they're also staking out their lines in the sand, and we're going to see some partisan fights in store. Right, and, I, and it's, it was interesting to me that you have the, uh, the Republican governor and the Democratic leaders all saying, we want to work together, but nobody really talks about, there's some pretty deep philosophical uh, differences with uh, the approach to government that Bruce Rauner is bringing in and the approach that uh, Speaker Madigan and uh, Senate President Cullerton have. Right. That was pretty indicative yesterday in uh, House Speaker Madigan's uh, speech as he was formally elected Speaker for um, now his 30th year. And uh, he, he got up and he, he looked at Republicans um, in, in, in the House and he said, I'd like to welcome you back, back to active participation in state government. And in, in, in talking about that, he mentioned that Democrats have in past years passed a budget without any Republican votes. And he, he was warning them that now they're going to be active, have to be active players. So now you've, you've got on one side the mentality of cuts and, and not extending this income tax increase. And, and, and you on the other side have, have a dem more Democratic agenda where Madigan and Cullerton are saying that, you know, we need to increase investment in education and social service programs. We need to find a way to do this. And by saying that, they're opening the door for, for, for extending that tax increase. Right. Now, one thing that I did notice, and um, since you have been down here for two years solid and you saw it throughout the 98th General Assembly, um, Bruce Rauner is sworn in on Monday. Mm -hmm. On Tuesday, he holds a meeting with all four legislative leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Madigan Cullerton and uh, Senate Minority Leader Christine Rodonio, uh, Jim Durkin, the Minority Leader of, of the House. Um, that to me struck a, a lot, big difference in tone than what we've seen under the Quinn administration. It did not seem to me um, that there was a whole lot of, of meeting and discussion mm -hmm. between the leaders and the governor at that time, was that was that the case, or was there stuff going on that I just didn't see? Well, I, in, I, man, I'm, I'm doing a weekend piece, kind of to, to this effect. You know, how did relations between past governors and leaders of the General Assembly work in the past? And I think you saw things across the board. But um, like you, I was staking out that leaders' meeting, and you're you're trying to you know um, pepper pepper the different leaders mm -hmm. um, with questions about how the meeting went, what was said inside that room, and. Um, House Republican leader Jim Durkin made a comment that since August of 2013, when he assumed the role, this was the first time that all four leaders came together to talk. So in his, from his perspective, that never happened under Quinn. And Rauner today, in his, in his remarks to the press after signing a, a, a yet another executive order, he, he said something about you know, them having very different leadership styles, but he was committed to getting all, all five of them in, in the same room and to talk on a regular basis, and he hoped that that would help facilitate conversation. And this sort of harkens back to uh, the era that, uh, well, it ended 12 years ago when um, Governor George Ryan Exactly. left office but you know you always heard about back then you had the democratic leadership and the republican governor ryan would get together and they would just do deals and the governor would 
crackheads and uh, I wonder if we're, we're going to see more of that. It, it would certainly be interesting and, and yes, one of my favorite um, speeches of, of Madigan's, you know, he is out and, and talking freely so rarely in public. A few years ago he was a keynote speaker at Elmhurst College's annual Government and Politics Day and I think Lee Daniels presided over, over that um, that annual day by the institution and Madigan was talking about the leadership styles of different governors and he spent a while talking about how Ryan would pull them all in the room and he'd say you're not getting out until we, we figure out a way to get out of this mess and uh, Madigan I think indicated that, that he respected that to some degree. And, and certainly if you look at uh, Governor Rauner's previous background, his business background, He's a deal maker. That's right. how he got to be, you know, who he is and, and amass the money that he has, I think. Right. So I, I, I have to wonder if that's going to come into play more here. One last thing. Uh, when Blagojevich, when Rob Blagojevich took office uh, in 2003, one thing that happened very abruptly was Springfield sort of lost its place as the center of state government and everything seemed to, to move to Chicago. Um, I got the feeling this week, we, we had a couple of press conferences by Governor Rauner, and granted, yes, this is inauguration week and everything, um, but Governor Rauner has now moved into the executive mansion. Do you get the feeling that he's going to reestablish uh, Springfield as more of uh, this is where state government's going to happen? I think time will tell, Matt, and I, I think that if you look back uh, six years ago, Governor Quinn said the same thing. I, I think he perhaps was not given enough credit for the time he spent down here during session. I think he was down here on session days throughout the spring. Now you have Rauner pushing it to an entirely new level. But I think the proof is in the pudding, and I think you know once once he's past session, we're going to have to look at you know are are he and the first lady still staying here, or are they staying in in in, in one of their other homes, and and where is government business really getting done? When and lawmakers are not here. So um, I do think for you and I, it, it becomes a really exciting time when you're, you're seeing these, these players have more of a presence at the state capitol where, where they should be. Right. And I guess really it all kind of starts getting done in about a month when uh, the governor gives his uh, big address. Right. Well, there is the, uh, the state of the state, which I believe is February 4th, and then uh, the budget address um, is, is coming up pretty, pretty quickly after that on the 18th. So I think, you know, he's got a lot of work to do in the meantime. I mean, he certainly hasn't been shy about saying that he's wrapping his mind around state government and policy. And I know he's been meeting with some members of, of, of former Governor Pat Quinn's administration just in, in working um, to understand the budget mm -hmm. and the situation he's in. But in these public comments we've heard from him in recent weeks, I think you're hearing that it's beginning to dawn on him just how bad the situation is. All right. Well, Carrie Lester from the Associated Press in Springfield, thanks for joining us this week on Only in Illinois. I think we've got some fascinating times ahead here in Springfield and in this chamber and uh, from the leader of this chamber, Speaker Madigan. So thanks for tuning in, and uh, I hope you'll tune in next week for another edition of Only in Illinois.